Good day, everyone. Today we are talking about section 4.30 and negative exponents. Our two learning targets for today, I can simplify an expression with zero and negative exponent properties. I can use all properties, so we're going to review all properties of exponents to simplify an exponential expression. So we have two properties. The first one's pretty straightforward. Any thing to the zero power is one. As long as a is not zero. The zero to the zero is not a thing. But as long as a is not zero, anything to the zero power is one. So five to the zero power is one. But Mr. A, you're wondering, how is that possible? So if I think about it, like if I had five to the third over five to the third, would be five times five times five over five times five times five. First set of fives would cancel, second set of fives would cancel, last set of fives would cancel. And again, when we're canceling, this becomes one over one, one over one, one over one. So this becomes one over one, which we know is one. When we did the quotient property, this would just subtract to be five to the zero, because we take three minus three is zero. So this is saying when everything cancels, remember it doesn't cancel out to be nothing, it cancels out to be one. And that's what the zero exponent property is talking about. The negative exponent. So what happens with a negative exponent is that we flip the negative exponent over the fraction bar. So when we have a to the negative one, again, this is essentially over one. And so we're gonna flip this to the denominator and, and when it flips over to the fraction bar, it becomes positive. Likewise, if it's in the denominator, we flip it to the numerator to make it positive. Please do not confuse this with a reciprocal. For example, if this was like 2x to the negative 3, the 2 stays because this has a positive exponent of 1. So that stays only the negative exponent flips. So we would flip that to the denominator. We're going to go through a couple examples here showing these. We'll do these first row together. Uh, negative 10 to the 0, again, to the, any non-zero number to the 0 is 1. 2 to the negative 3, again, we're going to flip it. 1 over 2 to the 3rd, and then we calculate. Yes, if you put 2 to the negative 3 in your calculator, it will tell you 0.125. Guess what? No decimals. And so the thing to remember is you can only calculate or what we call evaluate with a positive exponent. Okay, you can only calculate with a positive exponent. Moving on, zero to the fourth is just zero. Now, this one is a trick question that gets people all of the time. The zero to the negative seven, we're like, oh, zero to any power is zero. But it's not, because we can only calculate with a positive exponent, which means we need to flip this to the denominator. So we get one over zero to the seventh, which becomes one over zero. And we've talked about this when we talked about slope. What happens when you divide by zero? That's right. It's undefined. This is the only real quote trick question. You cannot divide by zero, so zero to a negative exponent is undefined. Other than that, that is the only trick question you have to look for. All right, so when you have a problem like this, what we will do is we will apply the power to all parts. 
anything with a negative exponent, we flip. So start on the top. 1 to the negative 3, we flip it. 4 to the negative 3, we flip it. 4 to the 3rd becomes 64 over 1, or we say it's just 64. Go ahead and try the last one quick. Hopefully you got 9 over 4. All right. This seems like a bit daunting, so I'll, I'll get you started here. But what we're doing is we're putting all of the properties of exponents in one place. So I would star this or highlight it or something that you need to... When studying for the test, this is where you're going to come. Section 1, 2, and 3 are all going to get combined here with all the, no well, all the properties. And then examples you can look at from your different versions and stuff. So, for example, the, these are in the order we covered them. So, that will help you a little bit. So, a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. And this was the product of powers property. So I'd like you to take a couple minutes, pause the video, and complete the rest of the chart. All of this is in your notes. We're just condensing your notes into one half page. All right, so you can compare your completed chart against mine. Again, I have not emphasized this enough. I do not care about the names of the properties. So really, what you need to know is everything on the left side. You need to know that. Everything that's circled by stars is what you need to know. You need to know the seven properties how they work and when to use them. That is what you need to know. If you know the names, great, but if you know how to use the properties, you will be a okay. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of review problems on here. Some of them are simple, some of them are using multiple properties. So pause the video and try doing all, what do we have here, seven? Try doing all seven problems and then when you're done, check back. All right, so 3 to the negative 2, obviously we make it 1 over 3 to the positive 2, and then calculate it, we get 1 ninth. X to the negative 7th, all we can do is flip it. The next problem we had, y squared over y squared. We subtract, we get y to the 0, and we know that equals 1. When we get to this last problem, there are a couple different thought processes on this. You could subtract and say 8 minus 10 is negative 2, and then I have to flip and get 1 over x squared. You would be perfectly right. Another thing people will do is say, oh, I know I'm subtracting. And I know since 10 is bigger than 8, that when I, if I were to take 8 away from both of them, I'm still going to have 2 left in the denominator. And so I know my answer is going to go in the denominator. If you have that mindset, you can do that as well. There is no one set way you have to do any of these problems. All right, the next row, m to the negative 4 over n to the negative 8. Again, all we have to do is flip to get the exponents positive. There's nothing to simplify, nothing to calculate, so you'd be done. Now we start getting to the trickier ones. Now, when we talk about flipping, you can go term by term, go or stay. So here we have q to the third. Since it is a positive exponent, it stays. Here we have r to the negative 5. What some people actually will do is cross it off and rewrite it on the other side. And that's why r to the fifth is now in the denominator. Here we have s to the negative 4. Again, we could cross it off and write it in the numerator. So we have s to the first times s to the fourth, and that's why we have s to the fifth in our final answer. Um, the numerator does not move, so 
two w to the negative three x. Didn't move anything there because there was no powers. You could, if you wanted to, cross off the w and move it. That is that is valid. Uh, the biggest questions people have with this problem. So on the denominator, yeah, we applied the two or to all parts. We had two squared w squared x squared. People always go, how do you get one half, Mr. A? Well, if I want to, I could say 2 squared is 4, 2 to the first is 2. What does 2 over 4 reduce to be? 1 half. Again, remember, this is at the end of the day, this is still a fraction. So reducing fractions is still a thing. And that's what's going on here. We reduce. We combine the w, so w squared times w cubed is w to the fifth. x, again, I could say that this becomes x to the negative 1 and then flip it. But either way, I'm going to be left with 1x in the denominator. All right. A couple of review word problems. And then when we come to class, we're going to do some extra practice or if you're on the Google Meet we're going to do some extra practice because this is the end of the properties of exponents so we want to make sure we understand it really well before our quiz and most importantly our test on this because from now on we're going to be talking about using properties of exponents in other forms. All right so this word problem reads the mass of a grain of salt is about 10 to the negative fourth gram about how many grains of salt are in a bowl containing 100 grams of salt. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the total divided by the unit. So the total amount. Now, I will say 100, we're going to rewrite this as 10 squared. So our total amount of salt is 10 squared divided by how much does one unit weigh? So if you want to say total weight versus unit weight, which would be just one, and then use the quotient property and I get 10 to the sixth grains of salt. The phlebotomist, this is a person that draws blood. I mean, that's that's their liter literally their living. They go around and draw blood from people for blood tests or for, that donate blood or uh, whatever, but that, that is a career. So a phlebotomist draws about 10 to the negative 2 liter of blood from a patient. So they take a sample, and it's the sample size is 10 to the negative 2. The lab test a drop, or about 10 to the negative 6 liters of blood, and that contains 10 to the negative 7th red blood cells. About how many red blood cells are in the entire sample? Okay. Well, we know how many red blood cells are in a drop, right? So this is red blood cells. There's 10 to the 7th per drop. That is what it's saying. We know that a drop is 10 to the negative 6th in size, so that's our unit, our total amount, just like we did with the salt. So we're going to go total amount of blood divided by the unit amount. So we took 10 to the negative 2. That was the total amount drawn, and then a drop, which is our unit, is a drop, is 10 to the negative sixth. Use our quotient property, and we get 10 to the fourth drops. That's how many drops of blood are in the sample, 10 to the fourth, or a one with four zeros, so 10,000. We are now going to multiply by the number of red cells, red blood cells per drop. So 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 7th will equal 10 to the 11th red blood cells 
in this sample. All right, one last one. Talking about order of magnitude again. So everything becomes power of 10. It says the order of magnitude of the mass of a polyphebus moth larva when it hatches is 10 to the negative third gram. During the first eight weeks, the moth can eat about 10 to the fifth times its own mass in food. About how many grams of foods can the moth larva eat in the first eight weeks? So when we're talking times, we're going to multiply. So we're going to take 10 to the negative 3 and multiply by 10 to the 5th. So we get 10. And please don't multiply the exponents. That is not how it works. Again, you add the exponents. So you get 10 to the 2nd or 100. And we're talking about grams of food. How many grams of food? So 100 grams of food. Again, when you come to class, we're going to do some whiteboard, some practice problems together first. But otherwise, if you have questions, make sure you bring them. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.